The news now on BBC One with Fiona Bruce. The Queen has marked Christmas Day with one of her most personal broadcasts yet. The theme was the ties that bind generations together, with a special tribute to the Queen Mother and Prince Charles. And Richard Branson abandons his round-the-world attempt after being forced to ditch his balloon in the sea. Good evening. In her Christmas message to the nation, the Queen has paid tribute to the Queen Mother and spoken of the shared experience of growing older. In a more personal broadcast than usual, the Queen spoke of the need for both young and old to reach out to each other across the generation gap. This morning, the royal family went to church at Sandringham, where they're spending Christmas. Outside the tiny church, the Queen and her family were greeted by well-wishers, many of whom make this an annual part of their Christmas celebrations. The past 12 months have been a calmer period for the royal family, and one in which they've consciously tried to counter criticism that they're too remote and out of touch. In her broadcast, the Queen said that growing older didn't automatically bring wisdom, but it did bring experience. It is not always easy for those in their teens or 20s to believe that someone of my age, of the older generation, might have something useful to say to them. But I would say that my mother has much to say to me. <laughs> Indeed, her vigor and enjoyment of life is a great example of how to close the so-called generation gap. And she said her mother had an extraordinary capacity to bring happiness into other people's lives. There was praise, too, for Prince Charles. His 50th birthday, she said, had been a moment of great pride in all that he'd achieved. This was an unusually personal broadcast in which she spoke not just as Queen. As a daughter, a mother and a grandmother, I often find myself seeking advice or being asked for it in all three capacities. No age group has a monopoly of wisdom. And indeed, I think the young can sometimes be wiser than us. But the older I get, the more conscious I become of the difficulties young people have to face as they learn to live in the modern world. She said it was the duty of parents and grandparents to trust their children and grandchildren, as well as to comfort and guide them. Today, with her family around her and the traumas of recent years subsiding, the Queen's warm tributes to her mother and eldest son underlined her efforts this year to appear less remote. Jenny Bond, BBC News. The Archbishop of Canterbury in his Christmas sermon said that economic uncertainty is contributing to the sense of insecurity in the world. Dr George Carey told the congregation at Canterbury Cathedral that it was important for people not to ignore their spiritual health. Pope John Paul in his Christmas message called for a worldwide end to the death penalty. Thousands gathered in St. Peter's Square in Rome for his address, which included Christmas greetings in 58 languages. Richard Branson's third attempt to fly around the world in a balloon ended just two hours ago when he was forced to ditch in the Pacific Ocean. All three crew members have been rescued and are well. The balloon splashed down about 10 miles off one of the Hawaiian Islands. It wasn't an easy landing. The balloon came down so hard, it at first bounced back 20 feet in the air. Overhead, a US Coast Guard plane tracked its progress and a Coast Guard ship stood by. It was the end of their hopes for the round-the-world record, but the crew were safe. The first two people actually had to jump uh, into the water um, to be uh, lifted out from one of our helicopters, and the third person uh, waited a few additional minutes and then uh, basically uh, left the capsule and then was uh, air vac um, also. Richard Branson and his crew finally reached land at the Barbers Point Air Base, looking tired but relieved. They battled against the Pacific Ocean winds for a day and a night and, uh, before both, finally uh, accepting they the weren't going to make it. They got halfway round the world in seven and, uh, days. They hadn't made it home, but Richard Branson said it had been a fascinating journey. At the control centre in London, there was cause for celebration. Until the crew were finally picked up, those back at base couldn't be sure the landing would work. They took a phone call from Richard Branson in the control room, who said it had been a hell of a landing. For some reason, we had a last-minute technical hitch. Uh, the balloon is designed and the envelope, um, you, you should press a button and, and the envelope just flies away. 
it wasn't going to work, they couldn't remove it, so they had to land the uh, balloon with the envelope fixed on. In the end, it was the weather that had defeated them, but the control room staff could still find voice to sing Christmas greetings to the crew. Valerie Jones, BBC News. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. In the last few minutes, Richard Branson has been speaking of his disappointment and of the struggle to bring the balloon down. We just wanted to get, wanted to get out of it and you know, wanted to get home and, and we were just holding on for dear life and um, venting, you know, venting the uh, helium to try to stop it. We had you know, four tons of propane banging away on the side of it. Um, and, and it was sad. I mean, it was the most beautiful balloon, uh, the most beautiful capsule. It was working like perfection. It had gone you know, better than you know, anybody else who you know, tried it before. And we were three days from home. And so just to abandon it to the seas uh, just because of the, this, this um, weather block was, was, was sad. The United Nations has warned of increasing tensions in Kosovo after a second day of fighting between Serb forces and ethnic Albanian rebels who are demanding some form of self-rule. International observers reported further violence around villages in the north of the province near the capital, Pristina. Unconfirmed reports say at least nine people have been killed in the last two days, including a child. A group of Britons evacuated from Sierra Leone by the RAF are expected to arrive in London in the next hour. 81 people were flown out of the West African country last night after an upsurge in fighting near the capital Freetown by rebels opposed to the civilian government of President Kaba. It may not have been the way they'd planned to spend Christmas, but at least these evacuees are now safe from the violence they've left behind in the troubled West African state of Sierra Leone. British diplomats who arranged the transfer to Dakar decided it was no longer wise to remain there because of the threat posed by rebel forces. The reason the decision was taken to evacuate was because of the de deteriorating uh, security situation on the ground and we thought it would be a prudent and precautionary measure to actually get people out while we could. Those they did get out included non-essential British High Commission staff and about 80 worried Britons who took advantage of the airlift by the RAF. Britain, meanwhile, will be happy to see that the guns keeping control of Freetown belong to the peacekeeping forces which recaptured the Sierra Leone capital in March. They restored control to the ousted President Kabar, who heads the democratically elected government. But violence flared once again this week when the rebels attacked the town of Waterloo, some 18 kilometres away. There are reports that villagers have been killed, tortured and raped, and the crisis appears to be worsening with claims by the rebels that they've seized control of two towns close to the capital. And amid threats that they plan an assault on Freetown itself, Foreign Office officials in Britain are advising against all travel to Sierra Leone. John McIntyre, BBC News. And that's all from the newsroom tonight. From all of us here, a very happy Christmas. Good evening too. I hope you're having a lovely Christmas, but I'm afraid in a way I'm going to spoil it a little bit because tomorrow on Boxing Day we're in for some really stormy weather with gusts of 70 miles an hour in many places and as much as 90 miles an hour in the west and north of Scotland and Northern Ireland. It's quite windy at the moment. The winds ease a little bit overnight and then during tomorrow, as you see, they really pick up and the windiest weather is going to be across the north late afternoon into the evening and probably into the night as well. So that's that northwestern part where you're likely to have the severest weather and the severest problems. We had a little area of low pressure today that gave over an inch of rain in many places. And this is the little monster we're looking at for tomorrow. Still a lot of showery bursts of rain around at the moment. They'll tend to die back to these western and later northwestern coasts with clearing skies further inland and then the more general rain beginning to knock on the doorstep of Northern Ireland towards the end of the night. But I think with a little bit of shelter, we might just about get temperatures low enough for a touch of ground frost, even some air frost in eastern Scotland. So watch out for some icy patches for a time at least on the roads. They're not going to last long because in the morning this wet and windy weather is going to come sweeping across most parts of the country. Eventually later in the day in some northern and western areas being replaced by brighter conditions but with blustery showers and here to reinforce are those winds in the northwest. Let's put some symbols on it. We start off bright in the east, already the rain gathering in the west and those gale force winds. By lunchtime it's going to be wet and windy I think virtually everywhere. Brighter weather by that time beginning to come in across parts of Ireland. That'll feed off into some other western and central parts in the afternoon. But it's really in the late afternoon through into the evening and the night that Northern Ireland and much of Scotland is going to be battered by those storm force winds. 
Temperature's about 9 or 10 degrees. That's fairly mild, but obviously with all that wind and rain, it certainly won't feel anything like it. And then the sea, uh, tomorrow evening, overnight, that area of low pressure moves away, but the gales are going to last well into the night, I think, in the north, even into Sunday. And then on Sunday, another system bringing wet and windy weather across the south. Good night. I'm not nervous. Just hungry and tired. Meet Dominic and Leah. They want to be stars. It's the final audition for Annie, and we'll find out today who's got in. Six, seven, eight. What correct? Once she's in, I tend to relax because then I know she'll do her best. I was awful. We just have to wait and see. Children, everybody come back here. We have to do a cut because we can't hire everybody. Meet the people of Paddington Green. Thank Holiday Monday, 8.30 on BBC One. It'll be a hell of a mission. A moment of history. <clears throat> a mission of dreams. Launch control, this is Houston. We are go for launch. Houston, we have a problem. The clock is running! It's like flying with a dead elven on our back. We never lost an American in space. We're sure as hell not going to lose one on my watch. Failure is not an option. Tom Hanks heads the cast in Apollo 13. New Year's Day, 8 o'clock on BBC One. The mince pies are flying as well as the insults in 45 minutes. A festive special and they think it's all over. Eagerly awaited Christmas present from BBC One before that, and it's all brand new. The boys are back for three nights of truly bad behaviour. <laughs>